and we will miss this place a lot. And it's with an extremely heavy heart that we've decided to... We're to go Rome, living an intentional life. We haven't got a plan. Well, I've got a short-term plan, and that is to head into Central Festival, our large mall here in Chiang Mai, to pay our bills, pay our dues before we hop on our flight back to the UK tomorrow. So, welcome to this episode of Two Go Rome from a very drizzly, wet and rainy Chiang Mai. There's that saying that life is 10% what happens and 90% how you react to it. Me and Sarah are reacting decisively and you're going to see that in this video today. I'm making most of this video on my own purely because, to be honest, Sarah's struggling a little bit with everything we're doing at the moment. It's kind of hit her harder in a way than it's hit me. So I'm going to be doing most of this, but Sarah is going to give you a little glimpse of our apartment later on in this video. Also, we're going to show you our costs and exactly what we're spending on our apartment and all our bills here in Chiang Mai. First bill I need to pay is to a company called True. It's over here. That's for our internet service where we get about, I don't know what it is now, I forget, 600 gigabytes download and three or 400 gigabytes upload. Crazy, really. So I'm going to pay that and I'm going to put on screen exactly what that costs. It really isn't that much. Another really cool thing in this shopping mall, you go in here, you'll see there's an ice rink. Chiang Mai has its own ice hockey team, which is really cool. We know when they play, and we try and get down here to watch them play. If you look just up here on the left-hand side, you can just about see some heads up there and on the far side. That's actually the food court here. A meal up there is about $1.50. So what we tend to do is work out when the games are on, head up to the food court, get ourselves a favourite meal, which for me would be a pak ka prao moo pet. Sit there and actually watch the game. The next bill I've got to pay is our electric bill. And because we spent so much time in our apartment recently, because we haven't really wanted to go out, we've had the air conditioning on all the time. So our electric bill is just under 2,000 baht. We pay our electric at the P, yes. The P. That is the Provincial Electrical Authority. That's two bills done. The third bill is actually, we pay that at our apartment block and that's for our water. In all our time in Chiang Mai, I've loved this floor in here because this is the tech floor. You can get everything from drones to cameras and everything. I love it, absolutely love this. So in all the madness of this mail, I'm gonna try and find a quiet spot where you and I can have a chat, bring you up to speed on what we're doing and some of the decisions we've been forced into making. I've worked out the only way I can find someone to sit down is if I grab a drink. If I grab a drink, we need a wee first. I'm just gonna do that, all right. Do you mind? Well, that's done. And I finally escalated down. I go to a coffee shop right down in the basement because it's a really good coffee shop and I know we can sit outside there. No one's overhearing our conversation. In the meantime, I just want to say this is the day after last week's video came out and we really were not looking forward to releasing that video because it just felt so depressing. I personally, not Sarah actually, was seriously questioning YouTube and thinking, you know, we're not, we're not in Chiang Mai, we can't show wonderful places. We're going to lose everybody. No one's going to be interested. And as a result of that, I was kind of losing my mojo. We went out for dinner with friends last night discussing exactly that. And I was all out of sorts with regard to YouTube, to be honest. And uh, I knew that I needed to make this video today on my own. I wasn't looking forward to it one bit because what's it all about you know what I mean we're retired traveling the world and now we're flying back to UK which I know is in the world technically but I don't feel like it sometimes so that was a bit of a challenge but today having read the comments that you guys left after last week's video you know when you typed in lake and all the other stuff you typed in alongside that 
it really, really buoyed me up, made me really excited about what we're going to do. We're going to do some, some we're going to change stuff up, to be honest. And the sense I'm getting from all of you is that you enjoy seeing me and Sarah interact and our sense of humour and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to turn that stuff up. We want that. You want that. Let's do it. So thank you. Thank you because if it wasn't for you, this video wouldn't be the way it is today. I wouldn't be showing you that I've had a wee. I'd just be knocking it out and getting one out there because I just didn't feel it. But you lot have made me feel it. I'm really excited about this video. I'm telling you what our plans are. Do you know what? Everything's screwed up, but me and Sarah are excited about that. And I'll explain later on why. And we're excited to show you where we're staying here in Chiang Mai, show you our apartment and show you all the public areas there and show you exactly where it is in Chiang Mai. It's quite an interesting location you'll find. So let's head down to the basement, grab a coffee, and I will talk you through the three complexities we're dealing with. And in all three of these, it's either stuff you can learn from yourself or it's stuff where I'm actually asking you for advice. We're a bit confused. Right, going to grab a coffee. There's a place just here called Wall Street English, where Thai people can learn to speak English, but not just any English, they can learn to talk Wall Street English. So I guess I'll be going, what you doing? What the hell's going down, man? That's what you're going to be hearing people from Thailand doing. They're going to be going, I don't know what the freaking hell's going on here, man. Yeah. This is a market for that kind of thing. You know what I mean? So people who've been to Thailand, you will know Cafe Amazon. So hot here and humid. But when you watch this video, uh, we'll be in the UK. It's a strange time all round, isn't it? The Queen has died. Our Queen. When I say our Queen, I think I think I speak for almost everybody. I think we all felt that she was she was our Queen. It doesn't matter if you're part of the Commonwealth or part of the British Isles. She's our Queen, and, and I know the majority of our viewers are American, and you all feel it like us. So the first little challenge, and this isn't actually one of the three complications I'm going to talk about today, but actually is, because I've just found out about it, this is the fourth one, is that um, the Queen's funeral is going to be on the exact same day that my dad's funeral is booked for. Uh, so I guess that we can't, we can't contact the palace to say, we booked ours first, can't you move yours? I don't know, they may have some form of precedent, I'm not sure. If you've just happened upon our channel on this video, it's the first thing you've ever seen, it's very weird. But to bring you up to speed very quickly, I had some very sad news from the UK a short time ago that my father had passed away. So that's what's affecting everything we're doing. If you want to come up to speed on who we are and what we do, just go back a few videos. That's when life is normal. Life isn't normal anymore. I said last week that whenever we speak to family back home, we hear of more complications. Effectively, those complexities just seem to, to compound and make things a little bit worse. And so it is that Sarah and I have been forced into making a pretty big decision. And this is something that you can learn from because as I said at the top of this video, it's 10% what happens and 90% how you deal with it. And by seeing how we're managing the complexities we're dealing with, it will hopefully help you with your own resilience as you look at challenges that come up in, in your life. I do apologize, it's a little bit noisy here. I'll do something in post edit to hopefully reduce the noise a bit, effectively right next to a car park. But I couldn't really make this video in our apartment. As I say, Sarah's struggling a little bit. So I thought I'd come here, mistake. I'm good at those. Whilst wandering around in there, I mentioned that there's one really big complication back in the UK, and I don't want you to confuse the word complication with problem. It's not actually a problem. It's a complication. It's a, it's a jigsaw puzzle that we need to work out, and it's a jigsaw puzzle that's on an emotional level and very much a physical level. And I will be sharing exactly what that is next week because I want to show you the complication I don't want to tell you about the complication because you won't viscerally grasp it unless you see it. So today we're going to talk about those three other complications that we're currently working our way through. You might need a bit of help on these if you don't mind. 
So the first problem is dealing with my dad's estate. As my last remaining parent, it turns out things were a lot more complicated this time around, and there's going to be a lot of unravelling that needs to take place on that. Now, I remember before Sarah and I started this 10 years of travel, we had a bit of a sticking point, and we had one conversation that it was almost a key that unlocked this life for us. And that is that with this lifestyle of retiring early to travel the world, the one thing that we don't have is a boss breathing down our neck. We don't have a boss that is that we're having to negotiate with and ask for a couple of weeks compassionate leave when something happens or something really serious happens like this. And that was the conversation we had back home before we traveled that we are in a unique position within our respective families that when something happens, we can actually drop everything and um, roll our sleeves up and play our part and actually take the pressure off our respective brothers and sisters. So that's the first complication, dealing with my, my father's estate. But the nice thing is that I can kind of say to my brother and sister, chill a little bit, we're in no hurry to do anything. We're gonna do what it takes. There's no reliance on any one of the three siblings to manage this. We'll do it together. Don't assume we're going to come back for a week, do what we'll do, go to a funeral and then scoot back out, travel in the world. We're in this with you and we'll work it through. So when we discussed that all those years ago before we started our travel, that was, that was like a key that unlocked because we're dealing with the guilt of leaving family and friends to travel the world. If you're planning to do the same thing, there's guilt that's associated with that. But it was nice to know alongside that, that if anything does happen, we're free as birds. We'll just come back and we'll do whatever it takes. And if we're stupid enough at any point to lock ourselves into something for a year, such as getting a visa, for example, in Thailand for a year, so be it. We jack it in, we move on. So that's the first problem, complication. Secondly, being perpetual travellers is a complicated status to have in the UK. I'm aware that in the US you can basically have a PO box as your home address, I understand. I think there's, a, there's like an RV place that people use for all of their correspondence and banks and people like that accept that as a home address. I also believe that was an option in the UK a few years ago, but that, that uh, loophole has effectively been closed. That means what we have to do to travel the world is we need to rely upon family and friends to be our home address effectively. And Sarah and me, our home address is my mum and dad's house. So that is no longer my home address. So the first thing we need to do is to sort that out. So any family or friends watching, if you're excited at the opportunity of having Neil and Sarah use your home as our home address and please do get in contact because that would be lovely and really really helpful at the moment but then we've got to contact banks government bodies doctors we don't want to fall off the nhs and find that should anything serious happen with sarah and myself that we can't make use of the nhs incidentally if there are any british nomads watching this who found a way around this challenge in the UK that you can't have something like a PO box as your home address, do let us know. Drop us a line in the comments. We'll use all the help we can get. So the third complication is basically timing. We had an outline plan to be in Thailand for a year and then we were going to travel slowly from Thailand via South Korea and a couple of other places, travel slowly back to the UK. That's what we had planned. Now we're going to the UK. At this point, when we leave the UK again, we don't really know when we're going to go back because everything's been shifted out. And the reason why we were hoping to be back there at the date we were next year is that coincides with my 55th birthday. Now I know, I know, I don't look 55. I know that. Everybody, everybody says it. Um, just get over it. I am. I'm that old now. Crazy. Look at this. I'm going to be 55. 55 in the UK is an important number. 
because that's the age when you have available access to your retirement funds, not your social security or your old age pension as we call it in the UK, but any funds you built up yourself in your SIP or a workplace pension scheme. The good news is we don't need to be touching our retirement funds yet. But what we do need to do is ensure that we're being as tax efficient as we possibly can because at the moment, as we're traveling, we have between us a tax available threshold of about £25,000, which is currently about US dollars And we're not using that tax threshold at all because we're not earning nowhere near enough through YouTube to touch that. So what we were hoping to do, get back to the UK next year on my birthday, see a tax accountant and work out what you do about using your tax threshold but also our status of being resident non-resident in the uk and certainly being non-resident anywhere else when you look on uk government websites it presupposes you're resident somewhere so we are currently not resident in the uk and we're currently not resident anywhere we're not tax residents of any location so we need to find an expert that can help with that too and then looking at the fact that we do earn an income from youtube however meager but it is an income so we need to ensure that that's taken into account and that we're doing our tax returns and all that kind of stuff too so we kicked all of that into long grass we were going to handle that next year when i hit 55 but now we're going back tomorrow what we're going to do is, when the time's right, once we've got through what we're dealing with at the moment, start to unpick all of this and find a good tax accountant and somebody that understands online income and understands nomadic living and being non-resident of UK or anywhere else and work out what our approach to all this should be. And we'll share that with you at the appropriate time when we actually know what we're doing. So, you can see we've got a lot of complications but we've got a lot to sort out. And so I said earlier that Sarah and I have been very decisive in what we do. And it's with an extremely heavy heart that we've decided to hand in the keys on our apartment here in Chiang Mai. And the reason for that is quite simply, we don't know when we're gonna be back. It could be in a month, it could be two months, it could be three months. I don't know when it's gonna be, but I don't wanna have stuff and a life here when we're in the UK. So we've spoken to the rental agency and we're, we're sadly handing the keys in with the hope that we'll be back in Chiang Mai sooner rather than later to complete our emergency self-defense training. And incidentally, our landlord, Bank, if you're watching this, because you might be, you're the best. You're the best landlord anyone could ask for. I'm not saying that so we get our deposit back, not expecting to get that. And actually, we'll, this will be sorted by the time we get to that. but. Just, just to say, he's, he's such a good bloke, our landlord. And that's why I feel that we can now show you around our apartment and show you all of the open spaces. So come on, let me take you back there now. You can see little Sarah as she packs up and see where we're living. It's pretty cool. We like it there. We like it there a lot. All right, I've just come out of that dark basement, so I'm gonna show you where we live. And it's quite easy to show you where we live from here. I haven't got to get in a taxi, or in a song towel, or in a tuk-tuk, because we live right here. Yeah, so this is my local shopping centre. So that's why I pay my bills there. And we eat in here a lot in the food courts, which means that our food bill is pretty damn cheap. And I like being so close to all that tech on the third floor in there. It's probably good for me to be moving away from here because I can't spend any more money on cameras. People think we make money doing YouTube. No, we don't. People like GoPro and Nikon and Sony and all those and DJI, they're the people who make money out of YouTube. <laughs> all us YouTubers have to keep buying new kit to keep making the videos. But I'm going to show you around. You see up there, there's a roof garden, we've got a pool, we've got a gym. I mean, Sarah, I've got an apartment. We've got a two bedroom place and effectively three balconies. Quite an imposing building. And actually our apartment faces this way, which is pretty cool. Got a good view, we think, where we are. If you're looking to stay in Chiang Mai and you want to be local to Central Festival, this is the place. This is a new coffee machine just been installed. And if you need anything urgently, it's here. But I stand there and it refuses to recognize me most of the time. 
Well, this time it has done. This is the reception area. That's where I pay the water. I'll do that later. There are, I think, 32 or 33 floors in here. We're going to go, first of all, onto the fifth floor because that is where the pool is and the gymnasium. Something happening in the gymnasium that I'm not sure looks like university students. Pi up University doing something in there. And this is our pool area. Really good places to sit out. And as you can see, a nice pool with a infinity area at the end. Right, next is we're going to take you to the roof garden. Our apartment's on the eighth floor, which is good because it means you don't have to wait ages for the lift and make its way up to where you are. I think ideally we'd have been on the 15th. We've been happy with that. Eighth floor's fine. So up here, we have an area which is basically like a conference room, all very, all very nice. You can book that out and use it. We've not needed to. And then there's seated areas up here if you just want to chill out or even work on the table here. And then there's also like a, uh, it's probably shut. Why shut? That's a like a theatre room type setup. So out onto the roof. This is it. This is our roof. Look at this for a view. A bit cloudy today, but over there is Dui, Dui Suket over there, which is north of Chiang Mai. So this is the outskirts of Chiang Mai. You see there's a main road that goes way out there. Remember we made a video at the Tuikau Botanical Gardens. Just get on that road, keep going, and you get there. And we would hop on our little scooter and get up there. But look at this for a, view, for a little rooftop area to sit down. We've made videos sat on that very seat. If we look in this direction, an interesting little area to show you. Down here, this is, this is what we would call our manor. So that doesn't look much from up here, but basically down there, you've got lots of restaurants and bars, but this is extremely local. Chiang Mai, the center of Chiang Mai is over here. This is Chiang Mai. We're way out of town. So our favorite restaurants, there's two next to, well, there's three actually. There's three restaurants that we really like down there, which are traditional Thai restaurants. And in all the times we've been there, we've not seen one other foreigner. It's only Thais, they don't speak any English. We don't speak any Thai, but we seem to work it out between us. The only other area for you to see is our apartment. And Sarah, because I know our videos aren't as good when Sarah's not in them. And that's why I'm gonna get Sarah in this at the end. So it's like, you know, the big finish. First of all, I'm gonna take these off. I'm in the middle of cleaning and as you know, it's just a constant, constant job. So these are coming off and I'm gonna give you a little tour. This is our lovely apartment. As you can see, there's so much daylight in here. This is actually like moving house. It is a complete tip, so I do apologise. I wish we'd done some filming of when we actually lived here, but we didn't, so you are seeing it at its worst. This is our lovely kitchen. There's a little electric stove in there, which we could have used, and there was a couple of pans. And it was perfect for what we wanted. Just a nice fridge and freezer. Had a washing machine out on the little balcony there, which has been great because I can get a little clothes dryer. You may have noticed there's a big pile of things, a blender and some drink. We've already given our friends one bag of stuff, but they're actually coming tomorrow to collect the well, later on today actually, to collect the blender and I've found a few more bits, so hopefully that will go to a good home. Moving on to our lounge. A lovely daylight and that's what sold this apartment to us, really was the flooding daylight coming in with, with having the number of balconies. Huge TV. Our lovely landlord sorted us out with this brand new TV. Oh, just realised who's on there. Ah. <laughs> Things about memories, they are. Are they yeah. good? Yeah. yeah, I like them. Okay, okay. So, yes, he sorted us out with that. It was a little tiny TV when we came and uh, 
kindly he did that and then to the balcony this has been great to have so we haven't actually been able to sit outside and there's there's obviously quite a lot of traffic here but the main thing was his opposite central festival shopping mall it's been great every time you look out there's something different to look at very busy but a good location and moving on what else we got to show you oh neil these are inflatable footstools gosh would have forgotten oh, yeah. these yeah these have been brilliant. They're inflatable footstools, which we're going to now carry around with us. And they have loved it in Asia, but we're going to have to let them down gently because oh, they're going Sarah. back to the UK. Sarah, that's bad humour. Sorry, Not couldn't funny resist humor. that one. <laughs> to our bedroom. As you can see, it's really lovely daylight in here as well. Cases everywhere. I think everything's packed or thrown in. It looks like Neil. He's just thrown everything in there. Um, There's a yeah. lot of tech in there actually. There is a lot of tech, yeah. so, but I think you're underweight, which is, Thank you. Which is good. That's <laughs> you don't get that very often, do you? Ever... <laughs> this is the Tugo Rome headquarters, Thai headquarters in fact. This is where all the editing happens and all our planning. It's been great, we've got the desk there for both our laptops. Did a great job putting this matting down so we could practice our core combat and do our daily workouts as well. I'll be really, really sorry or well, sad to leave, leave this behind because it's been brilliant for working out. That's our lovely apartment, two bed, great location. And we are really sorry to leave it. As I say, we've nested here, we've bought things that we really wanted to keep for the next year. And sadly, we're having to leave a lot behind and we will miss this place a lot. At the start of this video, I said to you that Sarah and I are actually excited about where we are. It might look externally like a lot of doom and gloom. It's actually not doom and gloom. One of the joys about our lifestyle is we can be free as birds. So that means we can be free to do what we need to do now. But we don't know, we simply don't know what comes next. And the one thing that's always excited Sarah and I, it might be about a vacation or really anything in our lives, is sitting down with a blank piece of paper and saying, what do we do? That excites us both. There's something about that that's pretty magical. And we're looking forward to while we're in the UK, sitting down with plenty of blank pieces of paper in pubs probably with beer that we can no longer afford because of inflation and working out what the future holds for us and if you were in our position dealing with what we are at the moment how would you feel would you feel excited or would you feel sad or a little bit worried about the future i'd really genuinely like to know and also have you been in a situation like this tell us about it I've got to say that so many of you have given such thoughtful comments to us recently and we just haven't been up to replying to them. So I did that kind of stop reply last week. We're going to find time after this one to reply to every comment you give us on this video. So please, wax lyrical. I will book a whole day out to reply to comments. It takes that long, to be honest, because you guys are really important to us. And if you are new here, and you want to see what this is all about, check out this playlist. That'll tell you all about it. Really appreciate you sitting through this video with me without Sarah. We'll see you next time. You've been watching Two Go Rome. Bye.